Hey guys, JH, welcome to practice tea. Okay, could be what we would term a very momentous practice tea today. Well, it will be for me, I, I must say. And I hope I've got the camera in the right place today and I, I don't appear headless like I did in the last one. I was adjusting the audio on the camera on the last video and I bumped it and knocked it down and didn't notice it, that it was uh, panned down and not uh, up. Okay. Why I say today is very momentous because guys I think I've got to to the stage with, with Channel Lock now where it's it's gone up onto what I would term the plateau of infallibility. And that is that it's so for me so so repeatably mechanical that it can't fail. It cannot fail to repeat the golf swing as I wanted to because the protocol I have now is so repeatable in the way I apply it and the last cherry that I put on the cake yesterday after I finished that video and I was doing some private practice with my buddy here was that I, I went back to where I've been my whole life with my general golf swing uh, and and just applied that last what I call if we're building a pyramid and, and as the ancient Egyptians did when they built that pyramid, when they got to the final point of the pyramid, all their work was done. And the crowning glory was putting the capstone on the, the Great Pyramid. The capstone there, that was the finalisation of, of the pyramid. Their crowning glory. So this is the capstone on my channel lock mechanics pyramid. And what it was, guys, was that, okay, now I've got... I've got my, my trail foot, I've, I've narrowed my stance up a little bit. I've got, as we know, we've got our, our, um, our shoulders closed, our ball back, and we're hitting here. And, and in the backswing in those other videos, clearly we were pushing the hands back with the, with the shoulder quadrant, or pulling it back with the trail shoulder quadrant as opposed to the lead shoulder quadrant. Now I've done that my whole life, really, in my conventional golf swing. And the reason I was able to do that was because I've always been connected. And, and by, by connected I have my upper arms on my chest, on my upper chest. And that's how I've always felt my golf swing, very Jimmy Ballard-ish. That's always, I've always felt that. Now if you incorporate that, and which I did yesterday, if you incorporate that in, in, in channel lock, the pushback here guys is extraordinary. It is extraordinary to the highest degree. You, you will get a feeling of pushback and positioning of the golf club like you've never felt before. And, and the range of motion is so unbelievably consistent, it, it will blow your head off. I mean, I, I achieved yesterday afternoon what I've tried to, to have in my golf swing my whole life, and that is absolutely the same feeling every golf swing that I make in the backswing. And when, when I got back to my old connection here and said, OK, I'm going to pull my trail shoulder around or push my lead shoulder. I actually do it a little bit with my lead shoulder and my trail shoulder. I pull them both around here. And when I do that, I, I get this fantastic feeling of connection and, and, and impact quality, like the likes of which I've never had before in my life, ever. I've just never had the type of impact quality that I was achieving yesterday. It was quite extraordinary quite extraordinary and and so I, I think that I've now got to the to the plateau of infallibility where the golf swing is infallible it will repeat itself every time providing I go through the protocol in the in the in the sequence and the manner that it should be applied it's all I have to do I only have to do that and the golf swing is a done deal it's infallible it won't break down it can't break down you could never ever use the word infallible in a golf swing I don't think ever Count Yogi could because he had an infallible mental routine. But mechanically, uh, I don't think you've ever been able to do that. At least I haven't been. But I've got it. Yesterday it was just it was just like it's like a shooting gallery, guys. Like, like the gun was on a was on a pedestal and just pulling the trigger and just shooting the ducks. Every one. Mechanic mechanical uh, robotics. That's what it felt like. So I don't have to change it now. I think I've got where I need to be with channel lock and my protocol going forward is going to be this. Haven't hit a shot today. We're going to come in here. We're going to get closed 
going to get uh, in the stance nice and narrow. We're going to load into the trail here. Show, we're going to push that across here against the hands and keep the trail foot down. Now guys, first shot of the day. First shot of the day and that is absolutely what we call Murderville. Not Vaudeville, Murderville. That's just killed the golf ball, first shot of the day. And I knew I would do that. I knew I'd do that. You know why? Because I can't do anything else. The protocol now is so ingrained for me. And what is my protocol? Okay. First protocol, part of the protocol. Number one is trial foot. Trial foot here, we measure the ball. We bring the lead foot up for balance. We've got the trial foot are flared out, we're into the trail side and we just push the club away here and then on the downswing we just let the arms fall against a, a non um, a non-active body, it's just a totally passive body, the arms just fall down and the body's not doing anything so that's my protocol I don't need to go anywhere else, that's a capstone on the on the channel lock uh, pyramid of uh, repeatable golf mechanics. So here we are. Yeah. Try that out. Turn this one around here if you want to as well, guys. But the main thing is the connection now. Pushing it back here and here. <laughs> Look at my feet. My feet are down now. They're just down automatic. I don't feel like I want to because my body's quiet now, there's no drive out of that trail foot. The reason that the trail foot used to come up because there was drive out of it. There was absolute drive out of it and I don't have that anymore. And so, <laughs> elementary dear Watson, if there's no drive out of that trail foot, what does it want to do? It doesn't want to do anything. It just wants to stay down. It wants to accept the loadings going down. So here's the protocol. And really work on the five o'clock nose. Push it back. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. I, yesterday afternoon was the, was the most enjoyment I've ever had in my life in golf. Because I knew every time I swung the club, I could hit it exactly the way I wanted to hit it. And I knew what the outcome was going to be. It must have been what Mo Norman and Count Yogi felt their entire life. They knew what the out outcome was going to be because they had their protocols down so solid. They knew there'd be no change in them. Okay, sit into the trail foot. Push back. I know what it looks like, guys. <laughs> but I know what that ball flight looks like. Ball flight's exquisite. Absolutely exquisite. I mean, I'm not giving myself a rap here, guys, but that's exquisite ball flight. I've never had that ball flight. I've had some great ball flight, but I've never had it so consistently as I had it yesterday. And we did it for about an hour, and uh, it was just every one of those shots. And the good thing was my buddy that I was practicing with, he was picking up on it. He doesn't do channel lock, but he has a few of the channel lock things in the golf swing. He's one of the guys that can't come to grips with the back ball position. And I don't force it on him. We've just been working on his golf swing per se and he's, he's striking it beautifully. His ball flight's as good as mine. He's still got the potential for that because he plays ball forward. But you know, it doesn't happen all the time, but it is there. I, I don't force anybody to change. Although I must admit yesterday he was... He, I think he was <laughs> almost convinced as what he should be doing. Okay, so we're going to sit into that. I'm going to push it back. Feet it down. Feet it down every time. A little bit more five o'clock nose. Come on. Quiet body. That's how I want to swing the rest of my life. That is how I want to hit the golf ball for the rest of my, my living days, which hopefully will be quite a few. It's that simple. And you know the amazing thing, guys? That CRPM that I talk about, that constant rate per motion, it is the same rate per motion when you push back with your sh lead shoulder or trail shoulder, because they don't move fast, they move at the same rate. And if you watch that swing, those swings, you'll see they're all basically the, exactly the same rhythm. 
quiet body. I could tell you anything guys, couldn't I? You wouldn't know, you're not seeing the ball. I could tell you anything, but I promise you, I promise you, Scouts honour, and I was a boy scout, that they are perfect golf shots. They are just exquisite ball flight. I've come like this. Look like a social player. I've got a social player looking golf swing, and I've got a robot, an Iron Byron robot ball flight. They're, they're not moving. They're not moving at all. Not at all. And this connection here, guys, is it. I feel like I'm crushing my pecs. And the good thing is I can just push it back here. There. Club doesn't get in behind the hands. Just goes, push it back there. You don't want to push it in behind here because there's no, <laughs> there's no recovery from there. And you'll know that you've got an independent hand action going on if that happens. If that transpires, if you do that, you've got an independent hand action. If you don't do anything, just stay here and just turn your shoulders, look club goes to here and if I turn around if I bring that back and turn around it's perfectly square no manipulation it's just fantastic and I know I'm going to do it every time protocol 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 Now, how's that for tempo? Have you ever seen JH swing like that? You know why the tempo is slow, guys? Because this doesn't move fast. These move fast. These are tempo destroyers. They will wreck your tempo. This goes at the same speed. It's like having a, a medicine ball in front of you here like this and you're going to pass it off to someone. You can't pass it off to someone fast. Jimmy Ballard used to do that. He used to get a shag bag with all the balls in it. In the early days he did have a medicine ball and that's how Jimmy taught his golf swing still does I've got so much regard for for the connected uh, process that Jimmy used to teach conventional golf swing is the only way to swing a golf club no question in my mind and it was interesting that Curtis Strange never won a tournament till he went to Jimmy Ballard and got instructed in Ballard's system and went out and won those majors and all those other tournaments. And when he left Ballard, he never won another tournament. How about that? And Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy goes out of his way to tell people that, but I don't blame him either. Once he went away from that, he wasn't the player he, he used to be. Hey, watch this guy. Now, I've got to swing slow because... I have to swing slow because everything moves slow. I'm not out there, so I don't. I could see where they're landing, but uh, I would say that the, the the difference front to back in those would be two meters. That's how accurate the distance is, front to back. There's no jumpers; they're all the same. You know why there's no jumpers? Why there's no jumpers, guys? Is because there's no jump in the in the tempo. The tempo jump doesn't change. So the, so the protocol is this. Here we are. And for someone that, that asked, uh, uh, said, look, JH, you look like you've gone to a really closed stance and shut down to the line. Well, I have, guys, because I've evolved in there. I am shut down to the line, but I'm still left of the line. I'm left of the line, then I back cock onto the line. But I do that automatically now because that's just in my process. Whereas in the old days, we were here, and then we back cocked around onto it. That's why we had the open stance. But once you get used to it, you don't have to do that. And I have the closed stance because I just find that it's so much easier to make the turn for an old guy like me. Come on, come on Josh. You know when uh, my great mate in the US, in Tennessee, my, my master coach over there, Bill Phillips, Tinker Phillips, you know when he says, his great line, he says, uh, Channel Lock, it's scary good. Well, I'm, I'm so scared now, I'm terrified 
of losing this because I've never had that type of ball flight and if I lose that I'm going to be crestfallen but you know what guys I don't have to be scared because I'm never going to lose this golf swing this is an infallible golf swing if I do this protocol here that I'm that I'm applying here I'll get the same shot every time I can't do anything else that's the good thing about channel lock nothing varies that ball position is always the same it'll never vary we don't have this up here we don't have it varying you know is it up there as a forward today or is it back today so if it's forward my weight's over here if it's back my Everything changes. We channel like it's always here. Weight's always here. Ball's always here. We're here. I'll hit a couple of drivers. And I'll just do this for Billy Phillips. Billy, this is the... Billy, this is the... This is the... Um, this is the Diablo Octane I've got. This is the European model, the Japanese model. See how it's an entirely different head? It's, it's, a, it's a different golf club. And of course this is the Tour Issue Diamana that, that Mickelson uses. It's so stiff down here, mate. It's a brilliant golf club. Not many of these around. It's a different golf club, Billy. And the three wood is just off the scale. I'll show you that in a moment. I've got two of them. I've got the European Tour Issue one, which is different again, the one that Stenson used to use. And I've got another one, which is a Japanese Issue one, which is great. Different to yours, Billy, but it's fantastic. Okay, here we go. Watch this, guys. This is exactly the same. Nothing changes. That's why the swing's infallible. You know the difference between that and those um, those five irons? <laughs> As my normal would say, what's the difference between a, a five iron and a, a driver? Uh, about a hundred yards. <laughs> That's the only difference. I don't feel any different in the golf swing. It just feels exactly exactly the same. And that's unbelievable. That that tea has gone somewhere. I've, oh no, it hasn't. I've had this tea for six months, got or longer, eight months. Had this tea for eight months. Eight months. Mo Norman had one for seven years. I've had this for eight months. Mo Norman's was a myth. This is not a myth. I've had this for eight months. You can't lose it. and You can't break it. Unbelievable. Don't know what they're called. They're just a store line thing made in Australia. Can't break them. Can't lose them. <laughs> eight months. I've had that. True story. Eight months. We bought a packet. I've only used two. And I just alternate them. How was that swing, guys? How'd that look? Look like the other one? Turn the foot out. Everything down. That's going to land within... It landed within five yards of where the other ball landed. Exactly the same line. Everything was the same. I'll crank this up. You say that looks a bit leisurely, JH, okay? This is gonna be the infallible protocol, but with uh, the big Garrett 65 turbo on it. This is a triple turbo. Now watch that, now to get the extra speed, guys, just quieten the body more. That's the formula, just quieten it down more. Watch this. Look at this, look at this. That's 20 longer. Scatch on, that's 20 longer. Looks funny, doesn't it? Doesn't look like a conventional golf swing. This is the old conventional golf swing. I don't even think I can do one. The old conventional golf swing. I used to have connection to the old golf swing, but look here. This is the old conventional golf swing. Look at this here, look. All that balance, all that drive. I didn't know where I was. Felt terrible. After after channel lock, it just felt terrible. But guys, so that's it. We've climbed the plateau. We've gone up onto the plateau of infallibility. We put the capstone 
on the final pyramid of mechanics. Let's go through it. Good driver that Billy, fantastic. Okay, here it is guys, here's my protocol. Here, the ball's here. I measure the ball. This is it. I measure it here. Bring the lead foot up for balance. Pre-turn uh, pre here. Get the, get the connection and I'm going to push back. And trail foot down. That's my protocol. I expect that. Because I do that. If I do that, I get that. And it's so easy to count it down. You just count it down, it just happens. Just count it down, it happens. How are you, mate? <clears throat> Last shot, guys. Watch this. Watch this. Okay, turn that foot out. I'm still coming to grips with that, but I love the narrow stance. You sit into the feet, quiet body, push it back here. Does that look funny? Sure it does, compared to a normal golf swing. But that ain't funny. But if I get over to the States and, uh, and do a demo, you'll see all this stuff. I get doubting Thomas has come in from all over the country. I had guys come in from all over the world, New Zealand, Hawaii, everywhere. Just uh, most time they say, let's see you hit the ball for 20 minutes. I don't believe it goes. It always does. The guy that came in flew his own plane in the jet from uh, from New Zealand. He uh, he was a, quite a you know quite a not a bombastic guy, but just a okay. So JSH, I'm paying for the lesson. I want you to do what I want you to do. I'm your servant. So I just want to watch you for 20 minutes. I don't want to know about swing. Just hit some ball. And he sat down and I hit some shots. Then just dead cold. Just and I started off the driver. Just killed it. And I've he said, no, keep going. Maybe do it for 40 minutes. Because after 20 minutes I hadn't missed a shot. And after 30 I hadn't missed a shot. And after 40 I hadn't missed a shot. So he gave up. I said, what do you want to do now? He said, uh, let's go and eat. I want to have lunch. So we just got him. We went off. We went down an hour and a half down the road here, had lunch. And he said, I've never experienced anything like that. So I've never experienced it. So I thought you had to hit a bad shot in that period of time. He said, I didn't think you hit one dead cold. Like you say, you always do. So it was quite an event, fantastic guy. Uh, he's been back a couple of times um, since then. He's flying commercially, comes over here, does business over here. Because uh, he said the, you know, flying his jet over here with his two pilots, uh, lessons end up costing him like 20 grand. <laughs> he's a great guy. He doesn't pay me 20 grand. <laughs> but, um, <coughs> yeah, so guys, it's, um, this is the golf swing. And this is what you can do. This is not just what JH can do. You know why JH is doing this? Because I'm applying my protocol. That's the only reason this is happening. I'm applying my protocol. And it's, okay, we've heard it before, we've heard it before. But this, for me, I don't need to improve it. If I just maintain this, this will do me for the rest of my days. Because I can't get better ball flight than that. I'd be silly to think I can hit it better than that, because I can't. That's perfect ball. I can't hit it better than that. So I'm just going to maintain this. So what I've got now in my protocol is what it is. And in the next video, I will go through that in chapter and verse as to absolutely what it is. Chapter and verse. The intrinsic um, mechanics of it. But I just wanted to show you that today, guys, because that, that ball flight is just... It's just pity there's people down here, because there's a green down here at about 170 yards from here. I just... I reckon I could rip, rip some shots down there and knock it inside, you know, 15 feet from here. But there's guys down... down and there's a guy on the putting green as well. It's a putting green. You're not supposed to hit to it, but... The, uh, but I sit the ball down so softly, guys, it doesn't make difference. And what's interesting with my ball flight, very much like Mo Norman's used to be, not that I'm anywhere, in, not, not saying I'm anywhere near in Mo Norman's class, but Mo Norman's ball flight was this. He used to hit it out. If you stood down range from him, he hit balls to you, it would come out to a, to a, to a zenith here and it fall straight down. No parabolics in it. He used to just go like that and fall straight down. I said to him, I've never seen ball flight like that, Mo. And he said, well, that's exhausted spin. I said, what does that mean? He said, well, the ball spins its way out there. That's why it's so strong. He said, but it just runs out of spin. 
runs out of spin, there's no side spin on it, runs out of spin so it just falls out of the sky. There's nothing more to lift it, just runs out of spin. He said, that's how you control distance. He said, you don't want to be hitting shots in the greens where you're going to get the ball backing up. How are you going to control your distance? That's what Tom Watson learnt late in the, later in his career. He didn't want spin on the ball. He just wanted to you know, shave the ball and, and get no spin because you can't control how much spin you're going to get and what the ball's going to do. But this is what this swing does, guys. It goes out there and it just falls straight out of the sky. So you've got no, you, there's no mechanical histrionics or flight histrionics on the thing. So yet it's not going to come in, drawing in, bounce and then kick left or, you know, come in, leak a little bit and then kick right. Just goes in, stops dead, comes in like that, which is what you want with irons. People say to me, how far do you hit your irons? And, and, and you know, if, if it's a five iron or something, I'll say, oh, I'm about 170 yards. I say, that's not very far. I say, well, hang on, that's carry. I know, but how far does it go? I say, no, that's how far, that's as far as I want it to go. 170, I can hit 185, because I step on it, but, but if I, I, I know I can carry it 170 to 175 yards. I know that. I don't want to have it come in here and then, then bounce up another 20 yards. It's all carry distance with irons, guys. You never think about anything else other than how far the ball will go into carry and where it will end. Okay, guys, that was it. I've got someone here. I've got to do something, so uh, very interesting. But have a look at that swing. That's uh, Yesterday was the greatest day of my life in terms of ball striking. I'll go in in the next video. I was going to do it today, but, but, but that guy's turned up. Um, I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll go into it in, in great detail. And I'll, and I'll show you, and I'll hit some shots down range. And if I can get, get here you know, late in the day when there's no one down there, I'll just rip some down there. So you'll see it. Okay, guys, have a look at that. Very, very exciting.